So for years, we've been talking up external GPUs, specifically related to gamers. But what about consumers and those in business? Well, today we're gonna to talk about the Lenovo Thunderbolt 3 graphics dock. It's powered by an NVIDIA GTX 1050. It goes for around 400 bucks. Today I'll tell you whether it's worth it or not and what are the pros and cons. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started here, if you like this content, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Now let's talk a little bit about external GPUs. So they're a lot of fun. Obviously, Razer sort of set the trend here, but the downside with external GPUs is their expense. They cost around three to $400 just for the enclosure. And if you throw in a GTX 1080 in there, well, you can easily approach 800, 900, or even $1,000. So they've always been sort of cost prohibitive, but the idea behind them is very interesting. Well, Lenovo is taking that idea and bringing it to business users. So I wanna make clear here, this is not really meant for gamers or regular consumers. Although if you're a power user, you should definitely consider it. That's because this is using a GTX 1050, and that's not the most powerful GTX out there. It's more focused on giving yourself a boost over current devices, specifically a ThinkPad X1 Yoga or Carbon, or something else that has a Thunderbolt 3 port. All right, looking at the graphics dock here, you can see it's very small, actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. You can easily toss this into a bag or a suitcase for travel, which is nice. It's also pretty light. It's not hollow, but it's not completely solid either. It is made from a plastic, and yeah, you can scratch it, as you've seen it already done, but overall, really solid build design. In the front, you have a three and a half millimeter headset jack. You also have three USB type A ports, including 3.1 support. You have an LED here, which is gonna be red when the device is on, but the graphics card isn't running and turns green when graphics is running. It's a really nice touch in. On the left-hand side, we have a Kensington port, so you can lock this down, which is super important for our offices and public areas. And turning to the back here, you can see the ventilation here for the GTX 1050, which does have four gigabytes of video memory on board, which is really nice. You have an ethernet port, HDMI 2.0, two display ports and the proprietary connector. I should say you can connect up to three displays with this at the same time all running 4K, and that's thanks to the GTX 1050. And on the right hand side, you do get the Thunderbolt 3 port. This is gonna be how you connect it to your laptop or external PC. You only get one type C port, but that's its main purpose. And here at the bottom, you just see the intake here for ventilation. You can see some of the piping for that GTX 1050. Overall, really nice design though. I don't have any complaints here at all. Now, despite being pretty small itself, the charger is a little bit larger here. Nothing is free after all. And you know, Lenovo does ship it with a 170 watt charger, which I always appreciate that Lenovo just puts it right on the stamp there. So this is the proprietary connector and you're going to need that power for all your displays and powering hard drives, whatever else you're connecting up to this. Plus don't forget, this does charge your laptop as you're using it. So you're gonna need plenty of power there and they definitely give you that. All right, so what about the experience in using this? So Thunderbolt 3 is still kind of a weird technology. What I mean is in a scenario like this, when you plug it in for the first time, actually it was kind of weird. My Lenovo ThinkPad actually paused for a second so the mouse cursor wouldn't move. So I was worried about that, but it was actually just installing stuff. So being a display dock, this actually has a lot of things it installs, including drivers for audio and all the ports on board. I should mention you also need to install the GTX drivers separately, at least I had to. So I went to the NVIDIA website, downloaded the GeForce Experience, installed that, and then it saw my GTX 1050, installed appropriate drivers for that and then everything was working. And there's still some weird issues here that people need to realize. For instance, when you plug in an external graphics dock to your laptop, if you don't run an external display, you can run it like that, but you may run into some bandwidth issues as you're setting the signal back and forth through that single cable. So that's why most people use this though in a scenario where you connect up an external display. So now your display signal goes all the way through the system and will use the GTX 1050. And I had no issues there once I did it. Now in terms of actual raw performance, it gets around 75,000 on Geekbench, which is exactly what we expect from a GTX 1050. In fact, that matches the Surface Book 2, the 13 inch model, which also has a GTX 1050. So the performance was very good here. Now, although I'm running this on my ThinkPad X1 Carbon, I plugged it also into the Huawei MateBook X Pro, and that has a Thunderbolt 3 port, and it ran on there just fine as well. And that device gets a little tricky too, because that actually has an MX150 graphics card on it already, which is, you know, pretty mediocre. And that's not even the good one, that's the lower wattage version. 
So now I had to uninstall the NVIDIA system and reinstall it, which then recognized the GTX 1050. And again, now you have two cards on this system, so you need to run an external display before you're gonna use the GTX 1050 with it. Otherwise, it falls back to the MX150. There are some hacks around this. You can disable the MX150, but it gets a little tricky. This is what I'm talking about with Thunderbolt 3 and external displays. It gets a little, little weird on there. And that leads me to the question with gaming. I know a lot of people are gonna ask about this. Listen, the GTX 1050 is a nice card. It gets your foot in the door for gaming. You can do some stuff on there. You can do PUBG, you can do Killer Instinct, and it will run much better than without it. But really what this device is for is productivity. You can connect up three 4K displays to your ThinkPad X1 Carbon, or any other device you may have, and run it like that, and get that extra graphics boost. And that's really what it's for. In that sense, it does very well, and I actually really enjoy the experience. Now, what about pricing? So retail price is $399. That's a little bit expensive, but don't forget, when you look at Thunderbolt 3 docks, they usually hover around $200 to $250. Even Microsoft's own Surface dock is retail at $200. Speaking of Surface, this does not run on Surface as there is no Thunderbolt 3 chip on those devices, so this is useless. Sorry folks, we know the deal there. Now, getting back to that pricing though, you can find this on sale for $370 at Tiger Direct and other websites. You can even find some discounts through Lenovo and get it for $340. Now you're talking that $100 difference for a GTX 1050, which I actually think is a pretty good deal. So if you're in the market for something that gives your laptop an extra boost, specifically here, a ThinkPad or productivity machine, you want to connect up multiple 4K displays, I think this is a really solid option. It's definitely gonna be cheaper than say going out and buying a Razer Core, although it does give you more options. You cannot swap out this video card, don't forget. It's an all-in-one system, but you do get the convenience of it. You also get to throw this in your bag. The Razer Core, as cool as it is, you do not want to take that in your suitcase. It's way too big. This, though, I can easily throw in my bag, even with that AC connector. Overall, this is kind of cool stuff, right? This is what we've been talking about and wanting for years. This is just the first of it. I'm sure we'll see more of it in the coming years. But you tell me what you think about this device, whether it's worth it or not, and what you want to see manufacturers do. Are you actually going to buy an external GPU or is it just the idea behind it? Let me know. All right, so that does it for this review. Now, if you want more information about this device, you can head to Windows Central where I have the full review written up there. If you want more information where to buy it, head into the description. Otherwise, we'll catch you next time on our videos. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.